Hello and welcome back to another episode of In the Gold Fields. We're down here on my second claim on the back side. I'm with a good friend of mine from Phoenix, Mike Zapp. He is the makers of the Desert Dry Washer, which we are going to be trying today. The reason why we're trying it today is because if you see my last videos, you know I'm packing around a 151 all over the place. Well, Mike actually makes these little jobbies right here. This is a puffer dry washer, bellows dry washer, I want to say. Yep. It's nice and light. It's probably, what, 10 pounds? Uh, about 15 pounds. 10 or 15? It's, it's, Max. It's very light. Very, very light. And it's made really good, too. And you're going to see a little bit about that later on here in the video. But we're going to be working some high bench sand. And when I say that, I mean, we have the creek behind us, but the creek's down probably a good 13, 14 feet. Easily, yeah. And behind us, we have actually a big rock pile that's way above our heads, but we do not know why or it, how. It doesn't make any sense what yeah. that's doing up there. It's it's from the old timers. They actually got a rock cabin that's half built still up here, but they have a rock pile that has no rhyme or reason why it should be there because the rocks are from a creek and the creek's way down here. They're way up there. And, and that's, that's got to be what, 40 feet up from us? At least. And there's no there's no tractor trails. There's no way. I, I don't know how they got it up there. If they did it by hand, they were really working hard. Tip your hat to them on that. Uh, I'm, telling like you, that. I'm telling you. But anyway, like I was saying, this is Mike Zapp, maker of the Desert Dry Washer. And uh, Mike, number one, uh, I, I, what, did, what got you started in doing your dry washers? Well, the idea was when I go out, I don't always have the opportunity to bring a lot of big equipment. Right. Um, I've got a lot to do at home with the wife and kids. So when I go out, I don't want to waste all my time hauling out, you know, a bunch of equipment, making another trip back in to get more equipment and come back. I started building these because these are light, they're portable, and they work. They go through a lot of material, and you can get these things in some really awkward spots that you're just not going to get a big piece of equipment into. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, I could, like I said, I can already vouch for it. I, I care, like I said, we carried this thing. It's it's just light and and pretty much little shovel, little shovel, bucket, bucket. Uh, that's about really all you need. Um, yeah, water, water, always bring you water, <laughs> water, water, water. Yes. Uh, and then that's pretty much yeah, you a bucket, a shovel, maybe a pick. Um, but it's it's nice. Like I said, it's nice, compact. Everything folds up into it. Like I said, it folds up into a neat little a neat little position. And trust me, you. Folks, you could walk, if you guys walked with anything, you could walk with this for a mile. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not that it's just not that heavy. But uh, Mike has started building these, and it's on. Uh, you have a website, uh, DesertDryWashers.com. Correct. And he does do different kinds of dry washers. You do have a puffer, which is this one. Yep, I've I've got the prospecting puffer. I've got the big puffer. And I've got a, a blower dry washer. And I've got a few other things on there, like a rocker box, uh, a finishing table, and classifiers too, okay. slide classifiers. So there's a few things on there. The idea is that you want it to be light and portable, yet still function very well, and you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on a big dry washer. I build these one at a time as they're ordered. Uh, I don't have a shop. I don't have an assembly line. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> hoping, for, hoping for one eventually, but the idea is I've been building these now for about a year, give or take. I've got a handful of friends that have wanted them, and they kept saying, well, why don't you start selling these? Why don't you start selling them? You know what? I finally did. I've got a couple of friends like you that put them out, and they really like them. I've, I've had nothing but, but positive reviews from everybody so far, and the fact that they're, you know, they're less than 15 pounds or so, that That's... makes it so much easier for somebody to get out on a yeah. day trip, and it just, it you can enjoy the day when you're not having to do two trips in with equipment, two trips out. I mean, as, as all of you know, if you go out and you you run dirt, the last thing you want to do at the end of the day is make two trips to haul big <laughs> pack equipment Pack everything out. back out. That is the roughest spot. One one good advantage I do see of this is, uh, number one, because where we're at, it's like you, you're, you're I'm pretty far back. We got a side-by-side, -side, but it it's way down there because you mm -hmm. can't get up here with the side-by-side. -side. No. So this thing actually travels really good. Number one, I'm, I'm not an old guy or nothing like that, not retired or nothing like that, but for a retiree that's coming out and doing prospecting for fun, this would be an, an just an ideal tool for you because you're not packing gas, hoses, uh, your equipment, the, the tables. Batteries, all that bat stuff. Yeah, batteries, you're not packing that stuff. It's all one unit. You unfold it, you shovel into it, and you work it by your hand, which is awesome because number one, it's 
go green. Everybody's trying to be safety yep. conscious about the gas stuff, but still you can work with your hands. So it's and another good thing is you're not blaring your ears out all day Correct. with a motor, yep. <laughs> which, which I've did that several times. Yep. So. And out here in Arizona, we get a lot of the fire restrictions. True. Well, there's no motor. There's no there's no concern on the fire restrictions. Obviously, you know, follow the rules and whatnot. But if you're going out to prospect, you don't have to haul gas. You don't have the blower. You don't have a battery and a big motor for a, a batter, uh, powered puffer. You don't have to bring a solar panel. This is it. This is it. It's small. It's compact, but it works. It runs through a lot of dirt. Yeah, buddy. Like I said, I, I've I've known Mike, Mike for a little bit, but I've seen him advertise dry washers on on a Facebook, and I looked at him. I like man. I know I work big machinery. I know I work a lot of stuff like that because I want mass production. But I don't have a 140, and actually this, a 140 would still be gaudy to get where we're at now. So I, I got with him and I ordered one. I already got it, he made it for me. Yep. And we've got that here today. And we're, like I said, we're gonna check out this high bench and stuff like this. But this thing, like I said, without this, we would still be packing machinery up here right now. Mm -hmm. So to me, I'm just saying it's, it's fast, it's efficient, it's light. So right now, as it stands, I'm really on top of it. I like the way it's built. He's got some good craftsmanship in it. I mean, pure metal pieces, you know, latches are on the side. They're old door latch or kind of uh, covered latches or chest latches, so chest, latches, chest yeah. latches. It's just really built good. Screws, everything's nice and tight. It's not, it ain't cob knob together like pieces and parts. He's actually, you know, took the, th took the thought and built this thing uh, to be useful. Every, so. every screw hole is pre-drilled. Um, it is redwood. It's nice and light. You don't have to worry about it really expanding and warping. Um, you know, any natural material is going to have have natural issues, whether it be knots or little splits, things like that. Right. But the durability of the redwood is the reason why I use it. Um, it's it's extremely light. The whole idea is that any of the parts, like you said, any of the moving parts, any of the thing that would have your wear and tear, that's metal. The rest of it is built sp specifically for ease of access. I mean. We, we hauled this thing in here today. I mean, there's no way you're bringing big equipment up here. No. no. But to bring something like this to test a spot, I, in my opinion, I don't think you can find anything better than that. And your hoppers, you said two gallon. It's a two gallon hopper. About a two gallon, two and a half gallon. Uh, four, four riffle? Yeah, it's got four riffle trays. Okay. Uh, the whole idea is that, you know, if you're going to come up here, you're probably not carrying 35 buckets. Exactly. Which I know you can do, and I've seen you do it. <laughs> but... If you want to go test an area, you're not testing 35 buckets. No, you're just wanting to get that, you're wanting to get in and make a, if you make, well, if you test it, you find gold, that's when you pack everything else up. In. Yep. So, the other, another good thing is, if you look at this thing, it's actually a bellows, but you notice the bellows is not outside anywhere. So, like, when you're walking uh, around here in Arizona, we got cat's claw, we got thistles, we got, oh, anything yeah. that's growing has got a thorn on it out here, folks. We it's got, trying to get you. Yeah, it trying, it will <laughs> it get will you. It will get you. So, the bellows is always hidden which is really cool because you're not gonna rip your bellows out walking through uh, any kind of brush or uh, cat, like I said, cat's claw. We've yeah. got one, two, there's four or five cat's claw just around us right now. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, this particular sand bank is really high off the creek. It's got rock in it, which yeah. we know that this is not fluff sand because no. it's still got the rock in it. So Very what we're gonna do is we're gonna work this today in this sand pile and I wanna find out just what's in this. Like I said, I'm still testing folks. My season doesn't start till the end of October. So I'm here in Black Canyon City. I'm early. I've been here probably a month and a half. A month early. and a half, yeah. I've been here when it was like 116 degrees out here testing. So, but if I had this, it would have been a lot better than packing at 151 yeah. to all the spots that I've been going to. Yep, I, I saw your video and I thought, you know what? I, <laughs> there's got to be a better way. There is. I can see it right here. <clears throat> this is, like I said, it's really, it's built nice. It's, it's tough construction. I'm very impressed. But uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead we're gonna get set up. We're gonna bring you back in, at, and uh, when um, when he's actually doing the setup, I want Mike to actually show you how fast, easy it is to set this up, and then I'm gonna show you around at pretty much what we're looking at and what we're gonna be digging, and then hey, we're gonna go from there. We'll throw some dirt. Yeah, we're gonna be we're testing this spot, and then later on today, which we'll be pulling you back on camera. I got another wash. It's not gonna be as easy as this stuff is to dig, but it's still another wash. It comes actually from a gold mine, an old time gold mine, it's still there. And it that is actually the wash that comes from that gold mine. So the chances 
of gold being in it, which I haven't tested it yet because I don't want to drag the 151 <laughs> way up in there, but testing it with this is going to be crucial because if there is gold in it, then I will take the time and pull the 151, all my buckets, all the hoses, all the, you know, all the motor, get everything up there, and then I will run a lot of stuff up there but, if there's gold. But you can't mine it until you can find it. That's right. If you can't mine it until you can find it. That's dang sure. <laughs> That is dang sure. So like I said, without ado, we're going to get situated, get set up, bring you back. We're going to show you the setup and everything like that. Then we're going to go through and we're going to work some stuff. Going to show you how efficient that this thing does run. Uh, like I said, he's he's thoroughly impressed by it. Of course, he builds them. <laughs> I, I'm I, biased. I, I know. I'm biased. <laughs> Me, I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed at how it's built, and I'm really liking how it is. And like I said, the, 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 the weight of it. You know, I can carry my bucket and everything like that. It's two hands and I can walk. I can, I can do a lot of stuff. I'm just really impressed. But anyway, hang in there. We're going to be back. And uh, yeah, we're going to show you how this thing's going to work. All right. Now, since Swiftwater wasn't so swift this morning and uh, forgot the tripod, <clears throat> I'm going to have to be holding the camera. But there's one thing before I show you this setup. Look here. This is, that's a trumpet plant, folks. That's a trumpet plant where you find the trumpet plants out here in the desert it's going to be highly mineralized so this is the stuff we're going to be working today like i said we're we're way up up the creek <laughs> what you, how far uh, i'd say at least 30 feet I'd, it's got to be at least a good 30 feet but like i said this stuff has been set here it's been placed here by the creek and it's just got good sand good rock good cobble in it and it's really high on the inside of a horseshoe which <laughs> you all know that's what i'd like to do but anyway Mike's going to show you here the setup and how easy it is. And this is the one that he actually brought to me. Yep. This is and the spot. like I said, let me show you the front and the construction and everything. You know, it's got, like I said, inside, he's really did a great job. I mean, I'm just, like I said, I'm really impressed with it. But uh, yeah, without ado, Mike, go ahead and just go ahead and do your setup. Okay. Setup's pretty easy. It's only a couple of eye bolts that actually hold everything together. I've got two eye bolts on here. These are the only two that are not connected to anything when you're transporting it. Set those aside. And what's the reason for that? They're just, just to make it easier. Okay. It, that way you can't lose it. Um, I use eye bolts. They're a little bit bigger. Um, anybody that's that's dealt with any of the hardware stuff, you know, wing nuts and stuff like that, and washers that that has a tendency to find a way to get into the middle of nowhere, and you just can't get the stuff out. So, one eye bolt pulls it pulls the legs out when you're from the transport location. Tilt this up. That same bolt is now going to be used for the brace of the leg. It's like that for both of them. There we go. Good thing it's not early in the morning, huh? <laughs> but uh, there's no tools needed for any of this. It's all eye bolts. Uh, very straightforward. Just got to through the hole into the rod coupling. All of the parts are accessible. Um, I've got some, oh, what do they call that? Thread locker, bead, whatever it is. I put some of that on there to make sure that the, the rod couplings don't actually start spinning on you. Well, no, so, the, so far, that's pretty darn easy. <laughs> I do the same thing on the other side. So from the transport location, pull the bolt out. I used the inside leg to go, see, just dropped one in the sand, it didn't go nowhere. Right. I used the inside leg of the two, I use that for the front. It spreads the back legs out a little bit so you don't have to worry about getting into that bellows or anything like that. Spin these in there. Now. I noticed that you're not necessarily tightening them down all the way. They, they actually bought them out. They actually bought them out. But why is the reasons that they bought them out? They've got a carriage bolt on the inside that holds everything steady. So okay. none of this stuff is going to move. Um, it, I set these up so that you do have a little bit of span here. You can see that we don't exactly have the most level and perfect ground to work on. <laughs> Never. <laughs> not a dry washer. Not business. a dry washer. But if you were to take this up into a wash, it gives you a little bit more play, a little bit more leeway to get your stability. Okay. Now that the bolts are in, I 
pick a spot take your cord that you use to close the whole thing up and one good thing i notice is because the cord he's got it's actually what do they call that the terracord paracord Ter yeah paracord now you can always if it if the string if the paracord wears out go buy another one they're cheap yep clip it right on the bottom oh. make sure you yeah, clip, it. <laughs> yeah, clip it especially when you're on camera right <laughs> <laughs> that's all there is to it listen how quiet that is guys now you notice one thing that i noticed is he standing up doing this? No bending over all day to be puffing this thing. That's nope. a big advantage. <laughs> another, another aspect, depending on where the wind is, if, you move, if you're in a spot where the wind's kind of blowing back at you, all right. I can now step away from it, and I don't have that cloud of dust going in my face. Neat. Oh, my safety string came down. That's not good. Well, like I said, folks, this was one he just built for me. So we're we're still, yeah, I'm still going through the, the hem holes of it. He knows the good stuff about it, but he, he, he was in a hurry to get up here yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> I was. But I, you can actually see the safety string. The idea behind the safety string is to make sure that the bellows bag doesn't get stretched out. Right. If you drop that core all the way down, last thing you want doing is that, that bellows bag gets stretched out. True enough. So I put a little safety string on here. Just It just takes the weight of it. It just takes the course uh, it's gonna make it last a lot longer uh, you know these things they're designed to take a beating they're not invincible nothing is but you know what to be able to repair something like this it's, it doesn't take much to do and you can see which and you can see right here you look at the keep pumping that bellows now look at that fabric look at that fabric going up this doesn't even have anything in it Airflow is going to be really nice through here. He's got it. He does have a setting uh, for the, the how much feed comes into it. He's got a little leather drop. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty. I am just like I said. I'm kind of excited that this thing's going to run pretty good. And I mean, that's just that's the easy setup. The hopper, the hopper is pretty good. Look, I mean, good construction. It's got nice back right here, so the wood doesn't get tore, tore up. I mean, it's really made nice, man. I can't wait to. I said, we're, I'm getting ready. We're getting ready to, <laughs> we're getting ready to tear into this, guys. Yeah, we're gonna throw some and, dirt. Yeah, as you, as you can see right now, we actually have the sun coming up now, which is not our friend in the desert. No. So, like I said, without ado, we're gonna get busy here. We're gonna get some stuff. I'm gonna bring you back when we got some stuff going and we're running. Uh, he does have a little classifier he brought with him. Not the classifier that he sells. It's just something that he brought that we could just toy with pretty much but the ones he sells are a little bit bigger mm -hmm. uh, like I said check it check him out desertdrywashers.com it's very easy go on remember Christmas is coming up uh, for you people that's out in courtside Wickenburg stuff like that around it you guys you guys know you do dry washing a lot so you need a testing equipment you need testing equipment like this so and I'm going to show you why how and when you should get it but anyway like I said be back here in a little bit we're going to get stuff set up and we're going to get working so hang in there all right, now we're back here. You can tell the sun's coming up. <laughs> now what he's doing right now is we have the feed slot closed. He's gonna fill the hopper. And notice we've already got sand on our ripple board. Primed it. Primed it, pretty much. As you can see, these rocks, some of them get stuck, but it is, like I say, it's a manual tester. And it is a two gallon. Uh, two gallon hopper. Yeah, two, two and a half gallon. So once he gets that nice and full, throw off your rocks. Okay. Now let's see this nice, pump. Nice hard pack on that one. Yeah, I know, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> now you're gonna he's gonna open his feed slot a little bit. Just enough where it feeds. There that looks good. And then just look at that action. Might want to open your feed slot a little bit more, Mike. There we go. And one good thing is this thing does not have to be totally level because it actually blows the sand up, which makes the gold drop. So it doesn't have to be perfectly level. The gold's going to be down in those on the riffles in the first place. And he does have a dry, he has to have a dead air space in there like a regular dry washer. That way, when it works its way down to the riffle, you're not actually going to you're not going to uh, 
blow your gold back out. There it goes. Now I know what you, you think that's a lot, but every time that sand puffs up in the air, all the heavies go down. And like I said, you'll notice no bending over. He's standing up just with the paracord and he's working it. And then after you're done with that hopper, you close back down your feeder, you fill it up, and you go right back to town again. Like I said, it's it's great for a testing. It's great for testings. Like I said, we're testing this little sand bench here because we know it's got rocks in it. We know it's got black sand in it. So, and we see trumpet plants, which he's digging right beside one. So. Scrape her out. If you're ever worried about the sand that falls on the falls off the end of it, yeah, rescoop it. <laughs> shovel it right back in. Nice. If you're worried about losing anything out of here? Shovel it right back yeah, in. Yeah, rerun it. You can always rerun stuff. That's no big deal. And once you get your thing, reset your feed again. And then work that magic. Remember, folks, this is old-time machinery right here. This has been test-proven for years and years. Yes. And when we're done with this little hopper here, it's a five-gallon bucket worth of dirt. If so that. If that, If yeah. that, yeah. You know, that's classified to half-inch screen on the top. You can classify it if you want to, but you don't really have to. I was going to say, so far, your classifier is doing pretty darn good. There's not big rocks coming out. Right after, has that nice little rhythm to it. I know it, it does, doesn't it? Well, it's good, it's like I said, it's quiet. You know, if you don't want to be disturbing anybody or yourself, you don't want to let anybody know where you're digging. Well, that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be a little secretive, you can you can get there with this exactly. And now, right now, we're I mean, we'd probably work some more, but I'm going to have Mike show you about the cleanup. I'm going to show you how fast it is to get this thing cleaned up. Number one, he's got a, he's got a pan now, he's got. He's got the old Clint Washburn freaking uh, Dennis Dayton purple. If you guys don't know who Dennis Dayton, the Indiana gold hunter, this is his special color because, well, he's colorblind. <laughs> so Clint made a purple pan for the guy, which is a good friend of ours on the radio show and everything. But uh, we'll go ahead and do this clean out. We're going to show you how fast this is. Like I said, two latches, and I call them chest latches. Tray comes right off. Dump it in. Inside, look, not a lot in there. There's, there's a little dust, but dust is not gold. Put the right back. Two latches again. And you're ready to go back to work. That's how fast, I mean, that's how fast it goes, folks. Just thoroughly, like I said, I'm really impressed with it. I like it a lot. And like I said, we're out here just doing some tests today, having some fun. It's always good to get the guy that builds it to show you how to work it. Right. <laughs> just to get, I mean, I know how to work it, but he, knows how. he he's he's just like I said, little little teeny tidbits is the stuff you want to keep in uh, in into play when you're getting stuff done like this. So. Oh, nice nice thing too is my son likes this one. He he's 14. He likes to when he goes out with us. This is a machine that he'll set up and he can run by himself. He doesn't need somebody to overlook it, and it's pretty straightforward. Like I said, no gas, no oil. So, you know, heck, heck, you're right, kids. Kids can do this by themselves. They don't have to be bothered by anybody else. They can just go off by themselves and do their own thing. Like I said, get your board prime back up. Now, usually about right there, as long as you've got them top two filled, you could start pumping. And that stuff will just, it'll feed down, it'll, it'll do its own thing, uh, in, in my opinion. That's nice puffer action right here, folks. Nice. The 
the hopper feeds itself too. It's got the it's got slanted uh, boards on the inside right. that help force everything towards that gate. Um, I've seen some of these that are they're all square on the inside, which is they work great still. But then you're left with that dirt in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Then you're sitting there shaking your machine, trying to get all that dirt out of there. You know, this just directs everything right down to it, right down that that flapper, so it doesn't fall behind it. And then it spreads everything out, and then the puffer just runs through. I mean, that's that's the end of that. I Close can fill her. up another bucket right now. Yeah. So. Close her down and do it all again. All right. Like I said, folks, this is going to be it's going to be an interesting thing. We're going to get busy. We're going to do some testing here. We're going to, then we're going to take you down to another place that uh, it's going to be a little bit more rockier because, uh, like I said, this is some sand that's got rock in it. But where we're going to go down here, it's going to be a little bit more, more rocky, and we want to get a, a little bit of video on and test and see how it's going to do in the actual big rocks and stuff like that too. But most of us, we're going to classify up down to at least I'd say half inch before yeah. you do it. Just that's just prospectors classify 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 that's just what you do but anyway like i said we'll be back later hang out we'll see you in a minute it's pretty interesting i'm telling you as soon as you get your feeder right and the flow is going it works great i'm noticing black sands it is keeping a lot of black sand in there, so that's a good hint to me. If it's keeping black sand, it's got to keep the gold, right? Now, like Mike was saying earlier, he's one of, people's going to ask, how, how fast do you pump it? Poof, 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 poof. It's just, it's a dry washer. you got to keep that rhythm. If not, you're going to tire yourself out all day. That's really nothing to, to sit and pull that cord. No. Like I said, I'm kneeling down, but you can stand up. Okay, just make sure my feed goes. Sand's going out real well. Seems like hard work, don't it? <laughs> Me, I keep kneeling down because I want to check out the action in the front. That's why I'm doing it, but. It is keeping, like I said, it's got, we probably ran, I don't know, maybe a five gallon bucket through this already. And it's got a lot of nice black sand buildup in it already. So, cut that feed down. You can keep running it too. You can keep pumping until you get that white stuff to go away. You don't have to have all that, that cons in there. Right. You can clean that out as much as you want to. And when you're comfortable with it, clean it out, take it home. I got, like I said, I like it because it's almost, it's almost like a motorized dry washer. It does keep a little bit right up against the riffle. It keeps about, what, I'm going to say a half inch, half inch wide of sand. So, and then I'm seeing right here in the back where you're puffing it, there's a nice, nice line of black sand. So I know the black sand's staying in there. So far, like I said, very impressed with this machine. I'm going to love it because I don't have to pack that 151 up no more. And yeah, it's just beneficial. You guys, I'm telling you what, if you ever thought about doing this, you want to start out fairly low income wise, like I said, desertdrywashers.com. Look them up. Mike Zapp's the one that makes these. Very nice, very strong, very, very good. I'm very impressed. Give them a look see though. Desertdrywashers.com. <laughs> Let's get back to work. All right, here we are, <coughs> excuse me. We have uh, moved, so you can actually tell, we've moved, yep. and we are down on claim, shoot, three. <laughs> we were in the middle on the backside of claim two, so we come all the way up to the front, and now we're on claim three. And you can see, if you look that way, there's plenty of wash. This wash comes actually down from Maggie Mine here in Black Canyon City. It's an old gold mine, and this wash goes directly to it. And you can see it's pretty, pretty cleared out, pretty cleared out this way. Nobody's dug too much in here that I know of. Uh, we do have, like I said, there's some high bench horseshoe we got right here. Uh, but today what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, a test right here behind this rock because I want to try to test the middle of the, the creek. And then uh, after that, 
when we get that test done, uh, since we don't have to show you how the dry washer works or anything, I think you've already seen that. Uh, we're going to get this test. We're going to head back to the camp just sand, and then we're going to pan out our tests. Yeah, we got sandbar and we got the wash, and we're going to we're going to pan them out when we get back to the camp, and then uh, we'll see what we got. If we don't get anything, it's you know it is what it is. But I know that we had plenty of black sands in the dry washer. We could just see it when, when I cleaned it out. So if there's gold in it, there's going to be gold in the thing. So I mean that's what that's what it is. It's testing. And like I said, this this right here, this is a, this is a testing machine, and you could tell by by Mike standing there. It's not, it ain't real big. It's nice and compact. It's a, it's cool. And there's, yeah, look at the shovel he's using. <laughs> it's nice and compact, but man, it does. We ran probably what a five gallon, probably a five gallon bucket in about what? A couple minutes. I was gonna say at least a couple minutes. It would, it didn't take long. No. But. Uh, the sun got a little hot beating down on us and I said, well, let's get over here and we got to test this final thing and we'll get back to camping and pan it out. But so far, hey, them, them I like it. degree temperatures are nice, but that sun is still brutal. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Still bakes your head. But anyway, let's get this test done. We'll bring you back to camp. We're going to pan it out and find out. If we find it, we're going to have it. If we don't, well, yeah, we don't. But like I said, the machine already catches black sand. So I know if there's any gold, we're going to get it. So stick around. We'll be back. All right, here we are back at Camp Just Saying. I got Mike sitting behind the camera here. He's taking a rest. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> it was a good day. Uh, <laughs> the dry washers worked extremely well for testing. Um, I, I think in my opinion, but you know what? It comes down to the brass tacks. So let's just do this. Here is our first test. We did double dry washers all on that one. And I know there's some good, good sand and stuff in here, so we're gonna see just how good it is. This come, like I said, this come off the sandbar that we were on. And that sandbar, like I said, is really, really high. I mean, it's super stupid high up in the air. And I can already tell right now, plenty of black sands. So I know if there's any, if there's any gold, that dry washer is going to find it. That was what, four, four clean outs? Yeah. I'd say between what we ran today, it was probably uh, three, four, or five gallon buckets full for the test. But like I said, this is already, it's already showing that this thing's got a lot of black sand in it. So I'm telling you that little, the little puffer is awesome. A couple things that I'm gonna do is uh, modify just the feed gate that he's got on it. He's got, I wanna put a triangle in it, like on a big dry washer that way, cause you know, I like to run stuff low and slow. But other than that, everything's really good. Worked really well. The bellows worked really well. Not a lot of dust got uh, behind the bellow, so that's even that's even better. And not a lot of dust got on me today. As you can tell, almost I still got a white shirt. So <laughs> it's better than 151 when it comes to that. But like I said, I can already tell that there's a nice black sands in this. So I'm really impressed with the dry washers. I like them. I like them a lot. Uh, like I said, DesertDryWashers.com. That's his little web page that he's got for him. <laughs> and you can actually go on there and he's got pictures of, you, his, different, of his different sizes and the classifiers and all that that he has. So go give him a check out for sure. Like I said, I got one and I'm, I'm pretty happy that I did because I, I needed a tester. But pulling that 151 around the claim is just killing me too much. It was just way too much. So like I said, folks, there's some Good black sands. Like I said, it's it's catch, it caught the black sands pretty darn good. Get this down a little bit more. Get a couple of these big boulders out of here. Now here comes the real thing. And like I said, I'm looking for any kind of gold that's in that sand bench. If I can if I find 15, 20 flakes, I'm definitely gonna be working that sand as hard as I can with a 151. But like I said, let's just find out. Let me get out here and get the sun so I can see a little bit better. Plenty and plenty of black sand. Okay. Not really seeing what I want to, but I'm not down at the bottom yet. Plenty of garnets. And which is really surprising, no buckshot. No buckshot? No, no buckshot, so that's pretty cool. We gotta go back on prospecting now. I know, right? Usually you can't I got, come home without buckshot. Usually I got two tons of it in here. 
anyway, like I said, I'm going through this. Plenty of black sand, so I'm, I'm, that's pretty cool. Oh, we got, uh, there's one flake in here. Two micros. Like I said, we didn't dig that deep. But plenty of black sands. I got uh, two micro pieces. Not big, but proves that there is gold in that sand bench. And like I said, we were just on top. What's deep inside that sand bench is what I want. Because if there's sand, something's holding that sand up. So that's a good sign. We did get one color. One color and a micro. So we'll put that back in there now. This is the test. This is the test that I'm really, really interested in. This come out of that wash that's directly down from an old gold mine here in Black Canyon City. So I'm really hoping, 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 hoping that there's some gold in this too, because that'll help me all the way around. So let's see, let's do like this, pan this out really quick. Like I said, we're not really looking for a bunch of gold. We're, well, <laughs> yeah, we are. But <laughs> today, like I said, the test is this test is just what we did. We went down there and tested a little bit. We didn't run a bunch. We just ran enough to get a good test. So, like I said, the first sandbar, it showed me that there is gold in it. So I'm happy with that. That tells me, because there's probably, folks, there's probably 50 ton of sand there, at least. There's a bunch of sand there. And okay, getting down to the nitty gritty. Now we didn't get as much black sand out of that wash that I thought we were gonna get a little bit more than that, but hey, if it is what it is, let's see what we got here. Come on, show me some gold. Once again, a couple of garnets. And swing and a miss. Nothing in that one. So, anyway, the other wash that's down from the mine, not so good. We actually dug in the middle of the wash. We might not have went down deep enough. So, uh, you never get to help. Oh, get out of here, Rango. But, uh, yeah, like I said, dry washers. Are, are finicky pieces of equipment, but if you get them done right, they're gonna work good for you. They're gonna show out, you know, they're gonna show you exactly what you want. If you're doing a production, they're gonna go with 151 or the 140. If you're doing anything smaller, uh, like most retirees, uh, kids, anything like that, you can, this dry washer is great for them. You can let them go, go do what they want to. And retirees, you know, it's nice and light. You guys can take it out of the truck, go walk wherever you gotta go without tripping all over everything and, and pulling a bunch of equipment down there. Uh, more or less, you'll have bucket. Uh, you bucket, your, if you wanna do classifying, you can, but the classifier is on the dry washer. But you can take a bucket down with a pick or and a shovel and carry the dry washer in the other hand and that's pretty much all you need. Uh, it was just like I said, we had a great day today. And I'm glad that Mike come, uh, come out Glad he made the dry washer uh, for me and everything like that. We, it, like I said, it showed to be a really good piece of equipment. So, but anyway, like I like to say, uh, want to thank my sponsors, H&B Mining, Grass, Cali Grass Valley, California. Old Sam the Man Baldwin. Baldwin. We like uh, we like have him as a sponsor. And like I said, when the wet stuff comes in, we'll be using his stuff again. And then my other sponsor, Can't Stop Smoking Barbecue, uh, Chandler Boulevard, Phoenix, Arizona. Check us out and good place to go and a good place to eat. But anyway, until next time, I'll see you later. And remember what I always say, folks, get out there and start living life before life isn't there to start living. And I may see you in the gold fields. Have a great day. Take care. In the mood for some delicious barbecue ribs, pulled pork smoked sausage, and the best brisket in town? Try Can't Stop Smoking Barbecue. Two locations, 2650 East University Drive in Mesa and 7250 West Chandler Boulevard in Chandler. Can't Stop Smoking Barbecue is serving up everything for lunch and dinner and deliver right to your home or office. Easy, quick catering setup for any parties and budget. Let them bring great barbecue to you. Amazing menu, lots of choices and delicious barbecue. Can't Stop Smoking Barbecue.